Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Listen and grow as Dell questions the status quo, encourages you to think differently, and empowers you to make a better life. Get ready as Dell challenges core beliefs, seeks the truth, and reveals the roadmap to the lifestyle you really want. And now your host, multi-millionaire, national award-winning investor, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to the Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, I'm working on your financial freedom. My friends, for those of you who have listened to me for years or just know me, you understand that I have this challenge or possible gift. I don't know what it is where my brain wants to align everything into groups. My brain is very good at looking at parallels, figuring out how they work together, how they belong together, and then making some kind of conclusion out of what that means. In other words, if I see things that are very similar in different parts of my life, they all tie together in my brain and go, ooh, there's something that makes sense. In other words, if that happened here, 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 and here, maybe though they don't, have any common ground, uh, I put them all together and come up with an idea about what's going on in the world and what I should do and what I shouldn't do in life. So I'm sitting here today going to go over one of these epiphanies that I had that's happened over, I've got to say, about a week, maybe more. And it started with uh, my wife's father dying, and she went out to do the burial and everything, meet with her sister's. Interestingly enough, this brought a lot of conversation to light. Obviously, probably any time anybody dies, that happens. But in this one, because the father had not been around very much, um, because he had been married uh, at least three different times that I know of, maybe four. Yeah, I think four. And he had kids from every one of the marriages. So you can, you can just even begin to understand the complexity of when he died. Now, the interesting part about the complexity is the guy has nothing, right? He has nothing to give away. He has a few accounts he left each person, like a little inheritance of money into some accounts or whatever. And um, it's interesting how even when there's nothing to divvy up, the four different generations of four different sisters um, have spent hours upon hours upon hours upon hours debating what should happen with this inheritance. And my wife obviously is so well off, she doesn't have any dog in the hunt, but she's worried about her sister who doesn't have the kind of wealth that we have. And so she wants to make sure her sister who really took care of her dad in his late years, gets her share. So that's why she has a dog in the hunt. She's fighting for her sister. The thought that came to mind was something I used to say when I was young and dumb, that I'm going to die young and leave a good-looking corpse. That was my mantra. But having said that, I have changed my belief system now as I got older to let's leave a legacy. Leave something behind for people that helps other people. So really being torn between those two different ideas, you know, it's it's a long ways apart, right? If you think about this concept, this guy leaves, he's really left nothing behind. And under the old theory, under my old theory, that was that, hey, why leave anything behind? You, You know, you live for yourself. And this guy was a very selfish guy. You live for yourself. You live in the moment. You use up everything you have in the moment. And you imagine him, four different wives and kids from four different people. That's all about himself. There's nothing about take care of the first wife and the first kid, the second wife and the second kid, the third wife and the third kid. None of that means anything to him. It's just all about me, 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 and I. And so to leave behind nothing, and he didn't leave nothing or something, but it's probably inconsequential in most people's minds. To leave behind nothing like that is to have that concept, let my last check bounce. In other words, I used up everything I was given on this earth. Now, you reverse that to the leave a legacy concept, and now your whole life has to change. 
from living in the moment, and I'm going to give you a concept that I wrote down this morning I thought of, being too busy doing stuff to entertain yourself, you have no time to build anything for the world. Let me say that again as we come here. Too busy doing stuff for yourself, for your own enjoyment, for your own, you know, gratification. To build anything to help others, to help the world, to do anything of value, to build anything valuable in your life. You don't do it. You can't do it because you spend all your time living in the moment. That's what it comes down to. And so as we go through today's talk, I'm really going to discuss this concept of building things, building things to leave behind. And what I'd like to get across to you, if I can, during this little talk today, is the massive joy (laughs) that you receive by building things to leave behind. Because when you build things to leave behind, you don't just build them for when you're gone. You build them for the joy of seeing them grow, seeing them become successful, seeing them be impressive. You grow things and build things for yourself and others. And when you finally see that, then you change your life from living in the moment to living in life itself. Because in every moment of the day, I've got to go to the bathroom, I've got to take out the trash, I've got to feed the dogs, I've got to go do the laundry, I've got to do all this stuff. Have a drink, get something to eat. All this momentary, really ridiculously trite stuff And if you spend all your time doing that, you have no time to build a legacy. No time to leave something behind for yourself to enjoy while you're here and for others to enjoy forever on. If you're smart, you figure out what you don't have right in your life. And right is one of those things that, you know, the liberals would go, oh, there's no such thing as right. It's okay to be a single mother all by yourself and have three kids from five different that's fine believe what you want to believe but i'll tell you about being successful and being happy and healthy uh comes down to having support group and a family is a very powerful support group and so when you look at this scenario you you have to make a decision what you want to do and the second thing that kind of you know i said that the 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 death of my wife's father brought a lot of some of this starting to, to the surface. But something else came up that really blew me away. And that was um, I was out of my garage building something. And, you know, I have a lot of different kinds of tools. And I had just figured out how to uh, install. I had not figured out, but I had just installed a new tool that I've had for a while and I didn't use it. Because I've had it for a while, but I just never got around to installing because I'm too busy doing other projects. And I've installed it. And then within an hour or two, I built like three things with it. I go, man, look at how much of this I've left behind. I could have used this tool to do incredible things. Even on the projects I did, I did it without using the extra amount of mm, in, intricacies I could have used with this tool. And... I just let it go by me. I just let it slip by. All the stuff I built, I didn't use this cool tool that could have done really neat things. Like, And I had the tool. I just didn't use it. So I ask the question, how many of you out there have tools and abilities and skills you've never used? They're sitting wrapped up in your brain, useless. I mean, there's lots of things you can do that you know how to do that you've just never done. And then like when I'm building things out in the garage and so forth and I have all my different, you know, shop tools of different kinds, there's new things you can do. So I'm always adding on a new tool that allows me to do new things and expand my concepts. 
with my guitars. I, I added new foot pedals to give me new sounds. And there's always things you can do to add new things to your life, to make what you're building and what you're developing, what you're creating more interesting. And it just kind of hit me. Wow. What else in my life out here in this tool? I was just thinking tools. time. What else have I got out here? I started looking around and go, you know, in the last six months, I brought on about three or four different tools that I've had that I've never used. Got rid of ones that were old and got ones new ones that worked well and got up to date with this stuff. And it's really what I found in life is the more you have, the more you do with what you have, the more interesting doing it is. And so I look at this all the time and I think to myself, man, what am I missing? And missing not because I can't have it, but missing because I just won't go do it. And you find yourself in, you know, this is talking out of church here, but, you know, my wife likes to sleep in. She likes to stay up late, but she likes to sleep in. That's just her time clock. That's the way her body works. I don't know. I guess she was a party her whole life or something, but she stays up till 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. She gets up at 11 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, she gets up just right before I do my radio show. And, you know, the, the thing is, I can't do that. I'll stay up to 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning with her, and then I have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. My body is in my brain, even in my dreams, is saying, tell there's stuff we got to do. we got to get up. we got to get up. Get... What about this, 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 and this, and this? And that's the way it works. I mean, in life, if you don't get up and do something, you're wasting that time away. And so this ability to create is being wasted. This ability to develop is being wasted. And I want to share with you this point before we get into the long-term benefits of creating stuff. There is a short-term benefit to creating stuff. It's massively pleasing. I mean, you should have seen the little Cheshire cat look. You know, that's the, the cat that looks like he's, you know, got caught with the bird in his mouth. The little bird in the mouth kind of look like, oh, my God. And when I came in to show my wife this woodworking project I did in just about an hour after putting this tool together, I go, and it was unbelievable. She goes, wow, that is really cool. And I mean, I don't know if she said that just to make me happy. If she did, thank you. But the bottom line was I thought it was really cool. I go, I didn't even know I could do that. I just started playing with it. Now, I understood how to use the tool. Don't get me wrong. I have used it in the past. I've studied. I know all about it. I just hadn't done it in years. And when I got it out and started playing with it, I go, man, if I can come up with this kind of neat stuff in an hour, what can I come up with over a period of time of thinking all the possibilities? Maybe even looking on YouTube and seeing what other people do with these tools. And it's just amazing what the possibilities are. So I'm asking you, what are you doing with your life? What are you building? What are you developing? Are you leaving something behind is not even the question yet. Which are you building for you? What are you developing for you? What are you doing to be creative in life? Are you doing anything to be creative in life? That's my question. Because if you're not being creative, then what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you watching TV every day, the same shows? I think it's funny. There's quite a few shows that I like that I really like. And the way I prefer to watch them instead of waiting each week to get one little show and then have to break into my life and my you know complicated days to go watch it, I like to let them go all the way to the end and then just watch them, sit down and just watch them like a movie because I really like the shows. But I can't stand the thought of going in there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and picking up a little show here, a little show there, a little show there, because inevitably, once you sit down to relax to watch TV, it's over. You don't ever sit down and watch your favorite TV show, then get back up and go, oh, God, i got to run out in the garage and do something. i got to get on the computer and do something and build something and buy something and make something and develop something and have something. It doesn't happen. Once you sit down, pull the plug, it's over. It's that first beer, that first glass of wine at night. It's that jacuzzi. It's that TV show. And it's over. We'll be right back with the Del Wamsley Radio Show.
teaching you with a roadmap to creating the lifestyle you really want. Keep listening. The Del Wamsley Radio Show returns in moments. Lifestyles Unlimited members share their stories and strategies for success at case study events. If you got laid off tomorrow, what would you do? Would you have to be working at McDonald's or wait to try and find another job with the downsizing in the economy? Kept on coming to meetings, even with David Fisher online and stuff like that, but still we just like, we need to make the jump. So we kept praying for time to get this job done to, to be able to find the properties. How do we find the properties? How do you find the time? And God answered our prayers and he got downsized from his corporate job. But they didn't buy just one house, right? No, they did not. Were you rehabbing house number nine right now? Nine. Wow. So every month the cash flow is thirty two hundred dollars. Okay, the equity of all the houses is up to 280000 Join us this month and learn from people just like you. Check in person and online dates at lucasestudy.com. That's lucasestudy.com. You're hearing the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Want more life-changing knowledge? Access our podcast and listen on demand at lifestylesunlimited.com under the radio tab. Now your host, Dell Wamsley. Welcome back to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Today we're discussing a multitude of things that all point to the same question is should you leave something behind and should you build something in your life? Or should you live in the moment, every moment as it comes up, and leave nothing behind? Two theories. One theory is let your last check bounce. In other words, when you're dead, you're broke. And the other theory is uh, leave a legacy for the world and your heirs and so forth. And so as we get into discussion, I brought a couple points to bear in the first two segments. This next segment, I'm going to talk about something else that happened because there's been a multitude of things that have happened that brought me to this discussion today. The next one that happened was I got this email uh, from a company. I'm starting up a new company now. It's a finance company. And the reason I'm starting a finance company is because we now have members all over the country and we do all kinds of creative financing at Lifestyles and they don't have creative financing availability all over the country. So we felt like, you know, if our members are going to be all over the country, they need to be able to get to financing all over the country. And so I figured, well, you know, 30 years later, I have seminars all over the country. 30 years later, I have members all over the country. I guess, uh, you know, two or three or four years from now, we'll have finance companies all over the country. We started with real estate companies, and I believe we're in something like five or six states, seven or eight states. I actually don't know because I just put out the mandate for our people to do it and they're doing it. And I keep signing these documents, starting new companies all over the place because you have to have a different company in every state, usually uh, different licenses in each state. And so you build all these different companies. And again, now we've come out of my garage and come into my life as a business person. I don't believe you just stick. I could have stuck with a office in Houston, Texas and been the big fish in a small pond, been the the best real estate mentor in Houston, Texas. But then we went to Dallas, then we went to San Antonio, and then we went to Austin, Corpus Christi, we spread out all over Texas. And then I could have just stopped there and been the biggest seminar guru slash real estate mentor slash uh, whatever you call what I do is um, in just Texas. But we ended up going all over the country. So why am I building all of this? Well, one reason, and this is the point I wanted to make in the last segment, is it's fun. It's actually fun to build businesses, to build things. And it's beneficial. So there's people working in each of these businesses. Now, right now, I probably have active, and I don't know this for a fact, but let's just say 30 companies. In other words, there's 30 LLCs or corporations that I own in totality that are mine that do business throughout the country. So each and every one of those has somebody working in it. Somebody's doing something. Some job is created. Some business is created. 
some services provided or some product is sold. And that's commerce. That's, you know, what they're always talking about. The small businessman makes everything happen in this country. Because we go out and develop stuff. The big businesses, they've already developed it. And I'm not putting down big business. I'm just saying, hey, small business is where things get started. And so the development of such is really the point I'm making is fun. It's like you could say it's like playing Monopoly. You went from having one greenhouse to two to four, and then you get to get out of houses and go to hotels. Well, just like this, you get houses, then apartments, then commercial real estate, and you grow your business. And I've gone and done all those. But in addition to that, I created a software company for our members to use. We created mortgage company now. We've created real estate companies all over the country. We're building all of these businesses. So back to the story. The other day I get this email from the lady who is the my partner in the finance company. And she sends me an email that says, hey, you got to fill all this out. And I opened it up and went to it, and I couldn't figure out what the heck they were talking about, what was going on. So I asked her what's going on. She goes, well, when you become the owner of a mortgage company, they have to check you out legally to make sure you don't have any illegal backing. You don't have foreign backing. You don't have uh, criminal backing. You're not laundering money. You know, the whole bit. They, they're checking you out for everything. Criminal, credit, the whole bit, just to make sure that you are of quality enough standing in our society to have the right to lend money. I guess it's the best way to say it. And I thought they would just look at my partner because she's been doing it for 30 years. But now that we're partners, no, they want us to look at me, too. So she sends me this email and says, Dell, here's this big, long list of companies on there. And what I thought she wanted me to do was list all the companies I've ever had. And I said, what, what is this? What's going on? She goes, well, when we, you know, sent you in for, you know, review, they found all these companies in your name and wanted to know if they're still alive, if they're still real, if they're, about, if they're still around. And I looked at those and I go, I don't even know that all these are mine. And then I talked with Chris, my CFO, and he goes, yeah, Del, those, those are yours. Those, these are with these people and these are with these people. And, these are with these. and then I realized I've been doing this for 33 years. There's not a year that goes by that I don't start at least two or three companies. That's like 100 companies that I've owned in 33 years because I'm always starting new ones. I'll start three this year. I started three or four last year. I start three every year. I just start new businesses. It's interesting to me as I go and I sit in a bar, and it's a Buffalo Wild Wings, by the way, and I eat the same thing every day for lunch. I eat the same thing every day for breakfast. And it's a pure protein meal for breakfast, pure protein meal for lunch. So at Buffalo Wild Wings, they have these chicken tenders, and I, I eat eight chicken tenders and a salad. That's my meal. I walk in. They know who I am. They make it. They don't even ask. been doing that for a long time because once your body gets used to eating the same perfect meals every day, your body just stays in shape. It stays the same. Um, as long as you work out on a little bit of a regular basis. The more you work out, the better shape you are. But the food is 75 to 80%, maybe even 90% of your conditioning. So I'm just giving you an excuse why I'm in a bar, okay, because I'm not drinking, I guarantee you. This is midday lunch between 12 and 2 or 3 type meal, usually right after I work out, typical. But if not, if I don't work out that day, I'll still get over there if I can and eat because it's healthiest food I've found. Now, why am I bringing that up? Because sitting in a bar, you get to see and hear stories that are unbelievable. And what I notice when I sit in the bar is the quiet desperation, the wandering generalities on this earth. And what I mean by wandering generalities is that there's all these people, they all look exactly the same. They all look lost. And by the way, when I'm sitting there in my workout gear eating my chicken, I look just as lost as they do. So don't get me wrong. I don't, I'm not like uh, going in there in a three-piece suit or anything. I'm going in there just as grunged out as they are. But what's interesting is 
when you get to talk to them, speak to them, whenever somebody brings up and it's a sports bar. So there's everybody commenting about the sports and I'll throw in every once in a while on something. And then you wander off onto conversations like, you know, what do you do? Who are you? Hi, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And it always comes down to these people or you're just listening, overhearing, because many times I just listen and overhear uh, people talking and they talk quite loudly when they're talking to each other in the bar. Uh, their stories. And in almost every case, it's guys who have jobs, gals who have jobs that are there taking a break from the stress and they really have nothing else going in their life. So I call them wandering generalities because you could take any one of them and plug them out of their life, unplug them from their life and plug them into somebody else's life and they wouldn't be missed. So, well, Dell, that's really cruel. Not intended to be cruel. It's intended for you to understand, like my brain works, parallels. And the parallel is all these people are living the same quiet, desperational life. They get up every day. They go to work. They do their stuff they have to do to pay for life. Then they go to a bar and have a drink. And or maybe they don't go to a bar and have a drink. Maybe they go home and have a drink. Or maybe they just go home and watch TV and eat. And they're overweight and out of shape. And they don't have a life other than the general wandering around aimlessly. What have they developed in life? Nothing. What will they leave their family? Nothing. What do they have for themselves to build joy in their life day to day with inspiration and accomplishment? Nothing. They have nothing. You say, Dell, that's really, really mean. No, it's not. Most people you meet, if we were to meet 100 people, let's just go pick them off the street, especially out of the bar at Buffalo Wild Wings, but in general, don't have anything going for them. They've got a job. Ask someone to define themselves. Who is your dad? And what do they say? He's an accountant. He's a fireman. He's a this. He's a um, in the military. People define who people are by what they do for a living, their job. Not as to what they've developed, what they have, what they could be, what they're working on. They don't, nobody defines their family members and friends that way. They define them what their job is. That's it. So, and that doesn't matter what race you are, guys. It's all the same thing. And if you got no job, then you're something you're not. You see a lot of people just tell you things that aren't true or they make up stuff. I love the one where it goes, I got some stuff working. <laughs> I'm working on this thing. I'm working on this deal. I got this thing I'm working on, right? But none of them really have anything. So here we are, and we're looking at our life right now and going, we got today, and then we've got X number of days until we die. We get up tomorrow. We either get up at noon and do nothing or get up at 10 and do nothing or get up at 8 and go to work. What do we accomplish today? That's growth. What do we do today that is growth, that makes your and other people's lives better? That's all I'm asking. What is the quality of your life? You ever notice in all my seminars, all my radio shows, everything I do, I always end with this. It's not the money. It's the lifestyle. Even when I had very little money and I was retired, I had made it a point to have a lifestyle because I worked 12 hours a day, six days a week for 12 years, and I realized I wanted a life. The money that I worked for was great, but it didn't give me a life. When I retired at 34 years of age, all I wanted was a life. Now, I've made more and more and more and more and more and more money because I figured out something very important. You can have other people work for money if you're willing to take the risk of developing the business and then letting those people do the work. Most people won't let other people do the work. And so they work their entire lives just getting by. If you're not willing to let others work, and remember, there's two types of people, those willing to work and those willing to let them. I fall into, I'm willing to let other people work. You have no time to develop the lives. There you have it. Not the money. It's the lifestyle. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow. 
the information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.